Welcome Weld Tube family. My name is David Teresa. I've been a pipe fitter welder for about 15 years in the trade. And today I'm going to be showing you guys the basics of pipe fitting. So let's get started. Alright guys, so here we have a 6 inch pipe. We got it up on some jack stands and be showing you guys how to prepare this bevel. Standard bevel is usually 37 and a half degrees. As you can see, this is already a factory end that's beveled, but we still need to clean it and prepare it for welding. So the first tool we're gonna use is this end grinder here. We're gonna clean the outer edge and the inner edge of this pipe, get it free of paint and any scale for the welder to be able to weld that pipe. And here guys, we're only going to clean about an inch that way you don't get any paint anywhere near the welder. On the inside you can clean, you know, only about half an inch. You don't have to clean as much inside. So on here we have a flap disc, guys. Uh, you can also use a burr bit just to clean the paint off and stuff. But I like this. It leaves a nicer finish. Looks smoother and looks cleaner. It just does take a little bit longer. Okay, so now we're been using the 4 inch angle grinder. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be grinding this at the exact same angle that it already has. So this is a factory end. And we're going to be knocking off, it's a little bit hard to see, but you can see the landing that's still on the uh, pipe here. We're going to be preparing this for TIG welding, so we're going to knock off this landing that's on this inner edge. Another thing to keep in mind, guys, is pay attention to where your sparks are going. You don't want to, you know, be hitting anybody around you. I like to aim them downward, so I'll keep rotating it to shoot the sparks downward, not at anybody. So now I'm going to be using this uh, flat disc here to finish off this bevel and smooth out the grinding disc marks. As you can see, now the bevel's all cleaned up. That landing edge is gone. Now, uh, now that it's sharp, you guys need to be careful when handling this pipe or picking it up. That edge can be very sharp and it can cut right through your glove. All right, guys, so now we're going to check the squareness of our bevel using a, a two-foot pipe fitter square here. So what you want to do with the square is set it directly on top here making sure that it is straight with the pipe. And now we're gonna be looking here at the inner edges of our bevel and sliding it back and making sure it touches both ends or it is very close. As you can see there, it's, it's pretty square there. Now we're gonna rotate this square and do it 90 degrees. Check the other side. You can see we're very close there as well. I also like to check it in between this 90 degree, basically at a 45. Doing the same thing, making sure our square is lined up here on this back edge so we don't get a false reading. It looks like our bevel is, is pretty square. All right guys, so now we're gonna be preparing our flange. Very similar to preparing that pipe, except this one has quite a bit of paint on it so what we're gonna do is hit it with a wire wheel first to get the paint off and then we'll start cleaning it up and guys before you guys lay down this flange on any table or anything make sure the tables free and clear of any welding spatter or burrs that way you don't go damage the actual face of the flange so now I'm gonna go back with the quarter inch disc so we can uh, grind our bevel down so now we're gonna go back with this uh, end grinder here and we're going to clean it up with a flap disc also inside and outside first so now we're going back with this uh, flap disc just to smooth out the grinding marks on it all right guys so now i'm going to use this jack here to help me support this uh, flange as we go to fit it up so for anyone that's never used the jack before you know there's there's here's some basic operations of it you have this locking nut here and then you also have this washer here that moves up and down. When you move this jack head up, that washer will hold it for you. But you need to be careful not to operate this as this will drop. It will pinch your fingers. So once you do move this at the height that you need, lock it down. And that will cause it from anybody knocking this or accidentally hitting it. Nobody will get hurt. The piece won't fall. So let's go ahead and set it up. 
And here I'm adjusting the height, just kind of estimating about what the, what the flange sits at there. Okay. Setting this flange on here, you know, holding it pretty square to the pipe. Now we're going to be looking, if you have access to it, looking at the alignment of the ID, which is more crucial than the actual alignment of the OD. And sometimes it will be a little different and most of the time it's actually very close. So the, the ID is actual lineup of the inside of the pipe. And the OD is this exterior portion of the pipe. Sometimes the way this pipe is manufactured, it does come either a little bit thicker, a little bit smaller than the flange. But your most crucial part is going to be lining up the ID for the welder to try to have a, a good root in there. Alright guys, so I have a fit up clamp here. So we're going to go ahead and put this on here to help us hold it so we can set our spacing and get it ready for, ta for tacking up. So I like to leave the open side on top where the welder is going to tack just to give him more room. And when we tighten this down, we try to get these uh, adjuster nuts here on the edge of the flange. And if you notice, it's got a kind of a cutout on it that we have some room for adjustment when you do tighten it down to the pipe. So I'm going to lock it down to the pipe now. So now I'm going to adjust to line up the ID. This may take a little bit and this may take some loosening and tightening on either side to try to get it to line up. Okay, so I'm going to start moving this back out for our gap. Most welders typically like a, a 532nd or a 8th inch gap. So now I'm going to get our spacer and I'm going to put this in between our two bevel edges. And then now I'm going to push on this flange to where all edges of the spacer are touching. As you can see now, we have the flange held up. Our ID is lined up here. You can feel around. If you do not have access to the inside of the pipe, like if you're fitting up uh, two joints of pipe or stuff like that, we do have a high-low gauge. And the way this works here is you see this line here? This is telling you when the two edges are actually lined up inside. And you actually push these down, turn it and stick it inside the bevel edges. And then you put, lift up. If either one of these legs moves up and down off your marks there, that means you do have some high-low on the inside. Basically internal misalignment. We're going to stick it in here. And now we're going to pull back on it. Looks like we are very close. We're about less than a 30 second off on our ID, top and bottom. Now we can check the bottom as well. So we're reading about the same now at the bottom, guys. All right, guys, so we're going to get ready to tack our flange here. And just as a note, I did not two hole this because it is on a straight piece of pipe and the orientation right now it does not matter. So I'm going to go ahead and tack the top. 
All right, guys, so I'm going to be using a 70S6 1 8 wire. I'm running about 80 amps here on the XMT 350. And for the welders, I like to kind of give like a one inch tack that still lets the fitter be able to move and square this pipe. But it's also big enough to not let the, tr the flange try to twist or misalign when we go to square it up and level it up. So now I'm going to remove this clamp. Loosen it up. So now guys, typically in the shop or any environment where you're grinding, the magnets are going to get full of metal shavings. You want to make sure you wipe that off before you go put this on the pipe. See here, we need to level this pipe a little bit. Go ahead and do that. And now we're gonna put this level in this direction here. So now we can level this out and that'll ensure that our pipe is square with our flange. I'm gonna use a wedge to basically put in there and get the adjustment we need and then we'll remove it after we tack. So we'll go ahead and tack the bottom. I verify that pipe's still square. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this wedge. I'm also gonna re remove this jack from here. So the second way you can also square this flange up, say that this pipe is in a position where it cannot be leveled. You can also use a square and a tape measure to double check this uh, squareness of this flange. So I'm gonna sit this square on the face of the flange, making sure it's touching both sides, making sure that it's lined up closely on top. Now we're going to measure on this close side here. And you can, if you have it, if you have room, you can also move your square to a round number, you know, make things easier for you. So we are at three. We are at three on the end of the square. So our flange is truly square there. So now we're gonna rotate this 90 degrees. And repeat the process here for the same side. So we're now we're gonna double check the level. And also as a note guys, a lot of these pipes, they're coated and covered with paint. You wanna make sure that there's no excess paint or anything where you're about to sit your level. You're actually sitting somewhere where it's nice and true. Okay, so we are level there. We are actually very close to being level there. It maybe needs to pull a little bit in this direction. So I'm gonna go ahead and tack the top as the, the top, the tack tends to draw in and that'll move it just a little bit we need. So now I'm gonna rotate this to the other side and go ahead and tack the other side. All right, guys, so we got our flange all fitted up, ready to weld. We are going to prepare this other end. And as you see, we have a straight cut here and we do not have a bevel. So we're going to need to prepare this up the same way. We're going to clean the interior and exterior first. That'll remove any burrs so we know how to make sure to grind our bevel and we don't unsquare this piece here. We are also going to be fitting up a 90 on this end since we already have our flange. We do not have an edge to follow here, so we actually are going to grind our bevel into it. When we grind, we're gonna be starting on this outer edge, 
grinding down using our 37 and a half degree angle until we reach the inner edge. You do not want to pass the inner edge as that will unsquare the bevel and you'll start to get a waviness on the bevel. So you try not to hit that edge. Even if you leave a little edge, when we go with our flap disc, we'll go ahead and clean all that up. Okay guys, so visually looking at the, the bevel here, from the original straight cut, we do have a little bit of waviness going on in this area of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a landing back on it. And then we're gonna double check the square and then we'll regrind it and resharpen that bevel. So now I'm taking a look over the top of this, you know, trying to look at this edge and this edge and this, these four edges and making sure that everything is nice and flat. It looks better now. Let's uh, double check it with a square. Okay, so same thing guys. We're gonna make sure our, our two foot square here is in line with our pipe and not twisting and doing this thing. Looks pretty close right there. So we do have quite a bit on this side here. The side closest to me here is a little high, so I'm gonna go back and knock down this side. And as I know, guys, be real easy with that grinder when you are when you are hitting that face there. It is very thin on that edge, and it's very easy to remove a lot of material at once. So when you go to kind of face that, Go nice and slow. Everything seems to be really close now. Now we are going to go back and remove this landing here. Another thing to keep in mind guys is when you do face like this, you will get a little burr on the edge and that cause that can cause you to miss grind your bevel again. What I like to do is I'll re-clean the inside, make sure that I don't have any burrs again and then I can really see that that landing edge to clean it correctly. Now I'm gonna go back with this quarter inch disc and remove that landing. Okay, so now we're gonna do the same thing. Finish cleaning this up with our flap disc. All right, so our bevel is nice and clean. We are now gonna prepare our 90. All right guys, so here we have our six inch long radius standard wall 90. We're gonna be cleaning off one of these ends to prepare it for welding on that uh, spool piece we have over there. All right guys, so as I started removing paint here, I noticed that it has kind of a back bevel in here. You take a look, it's got another false inner edge here that we're gonna have to remove. And typically it's that's a little bit easier to do with a, with a burr bit or carbide bit. And the reason we remove that inner edge is it can cause problems for the welder or it can cause confusion when they go to do non-destructive examination on this. It can give false readings and, and show things that are not actually there. So in order to alleviate that problem we're going to go ahead and remove it and clean it up okay guys so now our 90 is uh cleaned up and ready to fit up over there i'm going to go ahead and get everything set up so we can uh, tack this up we're going to go ahead and put these on our flange what these two hole pins do is they will orientate this flange to where we can put the level and know that our 90 and the two holes of our flange here are nice and square and level to each other on this particular piece here, you need to put it on the adjacent one. So that, what I mean by that is don't skip a, a bolt hole here, don't put it over here. That'll give you a degree and that's something different. On this pull piece here, we're just gonna go nice and square with each other. Also on a note guys, these flanges here, they have stampings on the outer edge that tell you the size and the classification of it. This one here is a six inch 150. And also the material is stamped here, A105. And right next to that, B16 and a half, that is our construction code for our flange. And this standard that tells us that this flange is standard wall, which is what our piping is. So after snugging up these two, two, two hole pins, you actually put this level right across the top here and rotate this piping till you get it level.
the same way, make sure your magnet is clean. We're going to put this across the top in the same plane that that other level is in. So now I'm going to go ahead and put the spacer in it. Okay guys, so we got our flange and our 90 here ready to tack. Our end here is level, our two hole is level. I've already verified the high low up and down and also side to side. So it'll be ready for its first tack there. So again, guys, I like putting a one inch tack that keeps everything from not twisting and, and moving around as we take off the clamps and move it around. Okay, guys, so now we're going to make sure that our 90 is square with our pipe here. So what we're going to do is check the level of our pipe here. And we're going to turn this two foot level here. And check that it's showing that it wants to come up just a little bit and as you see our gap is showing the same thing it is a little tighter at the bottom so we're level there we're level there I'm gonna go ahead and tack the bottom now I'm going to go ahead and remove all the clamps and stuff and we're going to rotate this 90 degrees so we can check the, the level in that way. Okay guys, so rotated this 90 degrees. We are level here. I'm going to check if our pipe is still level which it is. What I like to do is kind of run this level across the high side here. This is kind of showing me that it wants to kind of tilt downward, put a tack on this side, but to double check, I'm going to double check the other side. And it's telling me the same thing. So I'm going to go ahead and tack this side because it's, it's not a lot that it needs. So I'm going to rotate it up and Tack that side first. All right, guys, so also to be noted on our 90s, if you look closely, there's usually stamping on it, either here or on the side of it. And it'll specify the material, which is right here. And then it'll also say the size. I know it's a little bit hard to see. It's a six inch standard wall. Long radius 90. Hi right, guys. So there you have it. Showed you the basics of uh, fitting up this flange 90 and how to prepare these bevels. My name is David Sirisa. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and see you guys on the next video.